Tata, you're muted. Okay. Uh, you're, you're muted. You're <laughs> muted. Can you unmute, please? Turn your voice on. Your, unmute. your ears. <laughs> yeah, he's not wearing a we're on test now? Okay, yes. Okay, let's uh, begin with the word of prayer. We have a lot to get done and turn everything over to Basel and what's going on in Pakistan as well as the conference coming up next week, this week. So let's begin with the word of prayer and go into song. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the outreach of the gospel that you've given to us coming up this week with the young people. And Father, just pray your will will be done in so many different ways next week. Father, we thank you for Fassel being here. We thank you for everyone here. Pray that this morning will be glorifying to you. Father, we pray these things in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Okay, let's uh, begin. Tell me the story of Jesus, number 437. Tell me the story of Jesus, number 437. Let's stand and sing together. for prayers. Any questions? Anything's going on other than camp? I'm going to go over to you. Yes. I would just like to put Nick on the prayer request, please, today. Um, he has had an amazing two months. Last two days has felt pretty bad. So we just know that that's always going to come back. But just preparing for camp, we know amazing things God has planned for him at camp this week. So just praying for good rest today and just that God would strengthen his body and give him endurance for the coming week. So what would be the best way to pray? To pray for just uh, for endurance him. and for strength for his body. Okay. And just his energy for strength. this coming week. Okay. Yep. 
All right, any other prayer requests? All right. Now, do you want to say anything or do you want to just turn it over to him first? What do you want to say? What do we want to say? Can we pray for camp, please? That's uh, right. All right. Yeah, the weather is not looking great right now, but we would like to pray for adaptability, or if God okay. prays that the weather would change, that would be great too. Um, That's what I, I pray for change, and then I'll adapt to it. Right, right, right. <laughs> Let's put it in that order. Yeah. Uh, and then just praying that uh, all the teachers, we have some new people that will be doing small group teaching and stuff, and so for all of them and for us too, to be able to teach clearly and concisely and uh, in a way that can be understood. Great. So pray for impact. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, we're a small church, but we have some wonderful opportunities and one of those is our outreach. Another is young people and coming up and starting this tomorrow. So we have an opportunity to be a part of God's plan. So let's take a, a, a offertory and be a part of what God is doing in so many different ways in our small church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for the opportunities that you give this assembly. First of all, sending the word throughout the world and our internet. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the outreach to our young people starting tomorrow. All the opportunities that you give to us, Heavenly Father, right here in our assembly with teaching of the Word of God. Pray that you will continue doing this. We pray you receive the offerings we're about to give. Use them for the honor and glory of Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Got to ask one thing, Pat. Yes, sir. How's Mackenzie doing? Well, I don't. I haven't seen her since uh, last Thursday, so I guess she's okay. She, is she still married? No. <laughs> I'm still married. <laughs> they were. They did. I do know that they came back last night, and they're moving into their apartment. Today. Okay. All right. Just tell her we're in continuing prayer. All right, people. It's time. For Fazl, and he's from Pakistan, he's teaching at the conference this week. So, Fazl, we welcome you here. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, boy. All the way. There you go. Yeah, that'll work. There you go. That will work. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me back. Most of the time, people don't invite me again, but it's God's grace. And am I breathing hard? Let's take, lift it up just a touch. There you go. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you for your love, and glad to see you back on the, on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. we'll okay. On the side of it, put it down on the side, yeah. Okay, I think now will work, yeah. Which means I'm breathing hard, so which means I'm still alive, so that's good, that's good. Yeah. And I just want to encourage you, 
especially as pastor said you know we are small church but i think the most the smallest church are the mighty fortress that being used for god throughout the world mm -hmm. and today i'm going to bring to your attention that your small body individual not only prayer but giving how is reaching not only pakistan but other 10 nations so I want to open up with the word of prayer because prayer is, is a good a weapon to rely on. And definitely for me because English is my second language and I will take advantage anytime on a word of prayer. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your son. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit that is our a wonderful champion and the gem of life that he is a wonderful helper to lift up the Lord so we can continue to carry on. Thank you, Father, for Spring Valley Bible Church. Thank you, Father, for Pastor Human Maddox and for the congregation here. Bless our time together and those who are going to hear uh, this report in future. So, Father, may your spirit guide my mind, my, my lips, and to bring into the attention of my heart for the sake of the saints here to be encouraged and to remember that you are almighty. You are God of David on the battlefield to slay the giants that are standing before us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Pakistan, Grace Bible Church, is standing because of people like you standing behind the scene with a prayer, with so many things. And it's a beautiful place. It's a place with a lot of hurt, a lot of pains. Every time I see this picture and I cannot forget his face as, you know, he is just hearing the word of God. And I remember I was teaching in this village and he was just so engaged and remind me the passage of where Jesus, before he picked the 12, he said, there's a people like a sheep without shepherd. And that was a reminder. And that meeting, he became a believer when he heard the precious words of Jesus that was comforting his soul. So thank God, the gospel, method always change. Principles stay the same, but gospel, gospel never change. You can pick any story, anything. I can talk about Jesus on a Coca-Cola can. <laughs> and it's just beautiful to bring the name of Jesus. The new thing I'm using in, in, uh, in USA, anything, I'm going to order my food. I was in Montana and then recently in Arizona. They said, what is your order name? I said, Jesus. So they put my order name, Jesus. And when my order was done at the airport, it was next to the bar and the guy said, Jesus, your order is ready. <laughs> and I said, thank you. He said, thank you, Jesus. And I got my order. I said, beautiful. <laughs> you can use anything to communicate the word of God and the, you know, Jesus Christ name. I said, they will never deny they're getting my money and they have to speak, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you. So anyways, that's a beautiful way to communicate uh, anywhere the name of Jesus. So it's a non-copyright free for you. You can use it. So what's going on in Pakistan? So I want to start with the Bibles. Bible still distributing in Pakistan and have a beautiful story behind, as I probably maybe have mentioned before. When I was a non-believer and living under my father's authority and the rules, he was a bootleggers, heroin addicts, and a drug dealer. By the age of 9 and 10, I was, you know, the cleanest wood movie, The Mule. I was literally a mule to put a lot of stuff on my belly and just go through the, on the belly, not in Santa Bali, otherwise I will be dizzy. <laughs> So I will just, you know, go through the hard places and bring the drugs and whatever. When I heard about a gospel smuggling mission going on and I said, I want to be part of that. Because for my earthly father, I was 
so obedient to do all kind of earthly things in earthly way. And I said, how much more faithful should I be to my heavenly father? So I got involved with the VOM and yesterday I was wearing a shirt and coming into, you know, Texas, I'm a Bible smuggler. And that's <laughs> my statement. And everybody said, wow, for real? I said, for real. Ask me how, I will lead you. So Bible study and Bible Bibles are distributed in Pakistan and still going on. A lot of believers cannot afford it and cannot have access. So we are still doing the Bibles and thank God, God is providing above and beyond his word in so many places. So these are just the several pictures. I put it as a, a story note, how God is working in Pakistan, not only for believers, but unbelievers are attracted to the word of God. And uh, COVID, you know, when we look at in God's perspective, everything is working in his way. Just like, you know, John Hinz will say, God is so lucky, everything work in his way. <laughs> so I will use his phrase, God is lucky. <laughs> because everything work in his details, that is a sarcasm. I learned from Jesus. He was a very good sarcastic to the Pharisees. Amen. So, and so John Hens, so Pastor Herman Maddox and everybody else. So it's good to have a sense of humor to realize that God have a sense of humor. If you don't believe, look your left and right. <laughs> yeah, God does have a sense of humor. <clears throat> so that's what's going on. And then the leadership is still going on. And I've been focusing on a leadership, the 5E, exposed, engaged, equipped, encourage, and edify. Because when somebody became a believer, they need to be exposed to the word of God and engage to, again, engage to Jesus Christ that he is there, you know, one who will never fail and then equipped to encourage other and to edify. It's just a cycle of discipleship or leadership. So still going on. And last time I was able, when me and Kerry was in Pakistan from January to April, so we were there and I was able to go several places that was called the red zone, but God was good, protected. And I finished the youth conference. It was amazing. The pastor, he said, why people are not leaving? I said, I don't know. Ask your congregation. They want to have more. Mm -hmm. We went through over like a whole day study and then worship and everything. They do not want to leave. I said, one thing, Pastor, your congregation is telling me they are hungry. And secondly, the word of God is making sense so we can do it more. So it was a blessing. And then I went to that area and uh, there was a, a man who was paralyzed and they were waiting to baptize him. And they were saying, how can we do that? He cannot go from one place to other place. He had, he lost his uh, ability of speaking and moving and, but he can hear and he can see. I said, let's do a China baptism. They said, what is that? I said, a lot of people are hiding in places. You cannot proclaim openly. So I said, you have a water? They said, yes. I said, bring a whole bucket of water. So I went to the home and poured the whole bucket on him. And he was so happy. I said, I'm glad that I got under my belt a chat. China baptism. So you are being baptized and I have experience and story to tell. <laughs> so it was beautiful. So youth is growing over there in Pakistan. And uh, beside that, uh, the pastor conferences are still going on. And uh, thank God for COVID. You will say, you are out of your mind. Not yet. <laughs> COVID. As we heard thousands of thousands of report of, you know, people dying. But personally hearing so many story, how many hundreds of thousands of people have come to faith because COVID. People cling on to the word of God. Hey, what is that big book tell us about the end time? I think last time I heard the sales in United States was high purchase of Bible because people were looking for answers. Are we really 
in the end time, what is the stage is setting for with the COVID, everybody going under one world order, this and that. So a lot of people were questioning. So I made a statement. I said, COVID has shut down the airport and churches and uh, grocery stores, but the gospel message never will, be, never will be shut down. So I started a WhatsApp messages online. So first I was just teaching my church and then somebody said, why not it's free you go on a WhatsApp and start sharing the word of God. I said, okay, it's free, this and that. I said, okay, I will go. So I shared with my first message and that message forward to a group of uh, Christians who were in Pakistan and they said, oh, we want to argue you in another group. So for one group within a year, I will say within six months, from one group and now currently I have 140 groups listening online. Wow. And each group contain 200, a limit of 256 people. And that's how I said, I have a mega church. <laughs> I don't have to pay the staff. I don't have to have the insurance. No firework, no, no air conditioner. They can live, listen from their own bedroom. So that's how it started with the COVID 140 and then plus. My personal, I have over 1400 contacts. So I record message and send it to them. And I believe last time I counted, it goes to 10 different nations. Wow. That's how COVID blessed me with, you know, living on a so beautiful place in Arizona, in God's country to be depressed. No, God took all that depression and disappointment and turned into a divine appointment. And it is a blessing to know that how many believers are existing all over the world. So that's how, uh, God keep me, you know, busy. Otherwise I will be, you know, out of control, too much coffee or something. <laughs> so pastors camp for conferences going on. And finally, thank God for the Grace Academy School. We were able to finish me and Carrie was there and she did a good workout with the kids. So we finished three story schools that contain over 300 children. Currently we have a 270 children in the school and they are freely educated with the one principle that God grace is available to all of all and anybody who desires. So school is going well. All the te teachers are happy and we were able to do the grand opening last in uh, April before we left, I believe, for Pakistan. So thank God, when God allow you to walk on a rocky mountain, he provide the rocky shoes too. Not a Nike, but a rocky, because <laughs> Jesus Christ is the rock. So I call rocky shoes. And 316 Children Home is going well. Thank you again for your prayers and support for 316. They're all growing, they are getting taller, and some of them are chubbier, some of them are skinnier, so uh, they are doing well, all the children, and some of them children went back to their family, but some of them are mostly are there, and they are just thankful, learning and being fed well, not only with the physical food three times, but their day start every day, like a summer schedule for morning church is a 5.40, 4.45 a.m. They will get up and go to church and that's how they start their day. In the winter, 5.15 a.m. and they will go and learn every day the word of God and then school, then eating and working. So I was so happy when uh, brother was teaching the five, you know, five, five tests, the test of preparation and test of the discernment and the test of humility and authority and human good. And I was just calculating and the five things just popped in my mind that I learned from uh, Pastor Gene not long ago. It's just a five activities you do every day. Preparation is eat washing. 
It's a biblical concept from Genesis to Revelation as a royal priest that we come before the throne of God as a royalty prepare to wash our soul with the word of God. To approach his throne, that is a washing. Then discernment is eating. Whatever you eat, you are, or something like they say, you know, in Texas, you eat what you are, or you are, you are what you eat. So if you, you know, Jeremiah said, I found your word and I ate it. Job says, you know, I have treasured your words more than my Burger King or, you know, fresh fruit. The word, and, you know, so discernment comes from the word. So it's eating. Every day we eat whatever we eat, we think, and how we think, that's to determine what we eat. And then humility is, you know, washing, eating, and walking. Every day we walk from bedroom to the bathroom or from work to somewhere else. How we walk in humility or in arrogant. I said, wow, that's five points, very good. And after walking is, you know, working. Whose authority we are working? Jesus said, I am all about my father's business. So humility. Samuel, Samuel explained that David was on his father's business to get a report and deliver some cheese and crackers and some olives to his brothers. And he was interested to see a battle. And he was there. Humility and then authority, walking in the light. And the last one is the test of Human good, rest. Who we are resting? Are we resting in our good work that we depend on our own power? Or resting is the picture of faith rest where we will spend, you know, our whole time. So that five test was, I said, wow, washing, eating, walking, working. And that is an American dream. We wake up, we wash, put a perfume to please somebody else. And that's a simple picture. How we will robe ourselves every day to present ourselves to our Almighty. So He can have the barbecue smells from us. <laughs> the Jesus. Jesus aroma. So anyways, that was a side note. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> and Alicia. Alicia was there. His mother and father both were a drug addict. And they could not keep him so my younger brother's wife who her husband had passed away three years ago so she have already three girls and one son and his son her son name is elijah so me and carrie have like a literally adopted them into family to take care so then uh, alicia came in the picture uh, his mother want her to abort because they could not afford and my sister-in-law heard and she said, this is the story and uh, I can, you know, raise another child. I have three girls and one boy and I like to have another boy to raise him up into godly way. Mm -hmm. I said, we will help. So he was going to be, you know, gone, but thank God Alicia <coughs> came. So I named him Alicia John. So he's living and he's happy. He's a, he's a, charcoal boy he just you know light up whenever you talk to him so that's the story and keep alicia in your prayer charcoal yeah yeah you know you put a little bit smile on his face he's charcoal up <laughs> charcoal. charcoal charcoal like you know the burger that you cook with the charcoal charcoal, yeah. Yeah. charcoal something like that <laughs> and then the christmas care package <clears throat> 11th year, we were unable due to the delay of COVID, we could not go in 2019, uh, 2020, sorry, 2019, we were there, we got COVID, we got over, I said, thank God for the antibody, so we got it again, so it's good, all thing is good, and we're good for good of God. So 11 years, we were unable to do the December, and I said, Christmas is every day. How you look at it and how you proclaim the name and the 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 beauty of God's uh, you know goodness to come in a human rescue so we did it in April so it was profitable and fruitful we had delivered this time 
we were only able to go to certain places so we were able to deliver 997 <coughs> packages and over 200 kids got to experience the goodness of God and a lot of children got saved and heard the gospel I said it was worth for hundreds time living on this planet <coughs> when one gets saved it's just worth living for it worth living for it and it was beautiful beautiful and a lot of kids learn from the Galatian the food of the spirit and it was very practical to share with them the joy love and peace and patience and goodness and everything that was going on and I don't know if I shared that story this is the congregation from uh, one little prayer group turned into a church and now that is the church from the 10 different villages and that was the grand opening of the church new building and somebody was asking how God is working from a one little group it just starts spreading and spreading not only the main church uh, four church four pastor was graduated from the seminary class that I did over five years ago. Now they all have four congregations that they're immediately living in it and then go to the brick kilns and many surrounding villages. So they are growing. So we are under the process of six constructions going on in different places, in different cities. And one is particularly is the Hindu area where I really enjoy a lot of Hindus come and they hear about Jesus and it's beautiful. So we have the lot was given, but we are not still building there, but it's going to happen in future. So church is spreading, church is growing in Pakistan and even all the persecution. I have no time to take to explain what is going on the abduction the kidnapping the burning and destroying buildings and everything even currently one of them our church building some religious people came and they said we want you to shut down the work and we are going to go to the authorities and to get a, a government permit to seal your work i said to the elders i said let them go if they are granted it will be too late by that time we will be finished so i said keep working <laughs> keep working after the building is complete they cannot destroy it unless god allow it so i said that will be a story to tell how god is working so a lot of things going on <clears throat> in a mm, unexplainable way this is the story of a young girl five or six months six or seven months old this is a new family came from another city. So that's the x-ray I'm holding. That was on Sunday, but she came on Wednesday meeting and we've been going through the miracles of Jesus and just talking about how he's, he's powerful. And in Pakistan, only two things you have, faith in Christ or faith at all, nothing. So, she came and she said, you know, doctor told us that our daughter is not going to survive and there's no hope because she was born with a dislocated shoulder. And then uh, also her neck was crooked and a big tumor on back of her head. And she said, they said, there's no hope, but I believe Jesus can do miracle. I said, I believe that too. So she came on Wednesday night and uh, after I finished the message and she came forward and she said, will you pray for my daughter? And I believe God can heal and whatever his purpose, so it be. So I stood there and put my hand and start praying and I closed my eyes. And that was, I think the second time happened, I heard uh, just a whisper, open your eyes, open your eyes. And twice I heard and finally I opened my eyes. The tumor that I can feel and touch it just sinked before my eyes. It was unbelievable. I said, I'm not a prophet, but I'm a non-prophet. You can <laughs> donate it. But that was a God thing. Wow. It was unbelievable. 
I have so many story of prayers for Muslim, the policeman and some other, but that was like eye opening. And I said, Lord, maybe I needed, you know, uh, Alicia servant experience to see that those who are with us more than those who are against us. It was a God thing. And she came back on Sunday with the x-ray. She said her shoulder, her neck and tumor, no more. Wow. It was God thing. It was God thing. And I said, I need to share with the body of Christ that God is still in work of miracles, whomever he choose. And I was telling uh, Sister Lori that, you know, last night on a bed and I was just praying and looking up and I said, wow, what a perspective that God have chosen Nick to go through this whole struggle, just like he chose Job to be a mighty warrior on earth behalf of God and saying, I will use this simple human to get in the ring with Lucifer to represent me and he will still beat him to to you know to the point that it will justify in a spiritual realm that nobody will say almighty against the one he created the Lucifer he said no I have a better plan I will choose someone who can depend on me and I was telling Nick can be that picture of God chosen one to go through that time of struggles and everything to say, God is still mighty warrior. So God choose people for <clears throat> his glory, sometime for things that we cannot comprehend. And we need to trust in him. And that's why uh, the passage as we are going through the first hour, the story of David. Psalms 56 verse 3 says, When I am afraid, I will trust in him. The day, the hour, when we will face our when, what we are going to answer. The conclusion he's already told. I'm afraid. We all got afraid. That is the cause of the you know, first fall of Adam and Eve that we got from healthy fear to unhealthy fears in our souls and we get afraid of the situations. I remember when I was afraid, uh, still in Pakistan and we got an email prior before we leave and it was a somebody unbeliever asking that he want to come to faith in Christ but he went to several churches and priests and fathers and they said, get away from us, we don't want for you either a some Cordy is trying to destroy the whole congregation or we don't know if you are true. And he said, I was told by a lot of people not to come to their church because it can be burned their whole congregation and bodies and everything. So he said, I found your website and I'm asking help. I want to come to faith in Christ. My grandma, only the one in my whole family know Christ and I cannot go to anybody because they said, you're too dangerous. He said, can you help me? So I got his number and went to Pakistan. One month went, two months went, and I was preparing to leave. And Carrie was keep on as a good wife, asking me, what have you done with the guy who want to come to faith? He must be very, you know, desperate and there's nobody. And I'm thinking, could be a trap, could be, you know, something, somebody's planning to destroy the whole thing and i'm just trying to you know use the logic in a human perspective and kerry came with you know two by four with a statement <laughs> said what could worse happen to you the worst thing will happen to you you will go to prison and just preach the gospel there. I said, thank you, honey. <laughs> he said, the worst thing can happen to you, go to prison and preach the gospel. It remind me, Richard Warren Brand, you know, conversation with the Sabrina Brand when they are tearing down the faith in a Soviet Union and somewhere and they are just demolishing faith and peace. People are going on to their side and she said to Richard, are you going to stand up to wipe off the shame 
from the face of a savior. And he looked at her and he said, if I stood and speak today, I'm going to prison. And she said, I'd rather have a husband for Christ in a prison than a coward in home. It just a split second hit me with a two by two nine. Two, two by two is good. You can have a good grip. Yeah. <laughs> two by four is bigger but hurt less. I will use two by two. Hit me with a two by two and realize that I need to talk to this guy. What will be my answer standing before my savior that somebody was a desperate, want to know and come to faith. And with David, when I'm afraid, what is the conclusion? I will trust in you. So I called the guy and then asked him questions and he was ready just like the eunuch on the journey from Gaza to Jerusalem. And Philip just happened to be there taking, you know, flight with the Holy Spirit. No, you know, security, nothing. He just dropped there and running. He was a good in health. It's very good to, you know, run with a chariot. He was good in health and he just, you know, got to, he said, what are you reading? I'm reading about this guy as they talk about, you know, driven like a sheep, like to, you know, to the butcher house, this and that. What is prophet talking about? I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. So he gave him the gospel. That person was just like that. And I shared the gospel and he became a believer on the phone. He was so happy and just like put me into like, you know, my sauna room to melt. Wow. What kind of blessing I have will miss out if I was still afraid and not learn, listening to Carrie when she said, the worst thing can happen to you, go to prison and preach gospel there. So God is working and that guy is still connected with me and went full speed reading the Bible three or four times, got caught and used English Bible as his, you know, learning and then got away and then still reaching other unbelievers and he got baptized not long ago and he said sir i just want to share with you this good news you were the one who was willing to lead me to christ and i want to share this good news that i got baptized and i'm still working with the we uh, what is the mission mobilization ministry is called O OM team? Yeah, OM team in Pakistan. So he's working with them uh, and then he distributing Bibles and sharing. So God is in work. And uh, sometimes we need our two by two to be hit on our, you know, <clears throat> rare friends or head or whatever it takes. So God is working and this whole COVID thing, I think, thank God for every day, how God is working. How God is working and reaching and it just, you know, depend on which goggles we are using. The seers or the goggles of God, the Holy Spirit. Underwater goggles. A lot of people are wearing different goggles. So those are my cowboy terminologies. They're not non-copyright. So again, thank you for your prayers. And uh, we have another good news as you probably read in the newsletter that we got one acre. That one acre is dedicated not only to grow feed, but in future, turn into a safe haven for people who cannot leave the country <coughs> so they can come there, rest there, being fed there, and educated their children as long as God allow them to be there. So that is, I haven't found the name, but the two names going on in my head the house of Shunammite or house of Hananiah. Hananiah was a rescue place for Paul when he his eyes was open or uh, for Elisha, the old time, Old Testament talk about the Shunammite woman that she put a bench and the bread and everything, a bedroom for him to come and rest until he's move on to the next mission. So that's the design. So we got 
negotiation going on for three more acres and it will be a blessing and i think god already is in the pursuit of this mission and is going to bless so many souls and other than i'm looking forward to a camp and it's gonna be a biblical, it's gonna be a wonderful camp. And after that, me and Carrie are planning to go back to Pakistan, I think in August. I think first I will go for myself, by myself, and then she will join me later on. So continue to pray for Israel, baby Israel. He's three years old. He's talking and he's dancing like a David return from war. <laughs> and just, you know, on. He's learning so many things. He's so funny <clears throat> and just keep praying. He's a uh, immigration process still in, in action. And uh, Carrie sent her greeting. She said, I know I will miss everybody. Please pass my greetings. She have to stay home because the home mean daddy is the one who has been open her door for us to live in her basement from past almost nine years. When we are left from Chicago to Arizona from that point, she said, come and stay in my basement. She's 84, she walks with Dottie. Dottie and Carrie walks at least five miles a day. And she's, she's a, sometimes she put me to, you know, lock and uh, pinned on and he's they both are going to boot camp I think three or four mornings a day and they are just you know rocking it <laughs> so keep them in prayer so that was the purpose that Carrie had to stay and she's daddy's in good health and just need help with you know going places sometime or other things in a, in home for appointment and other things so that's why Carrie stay at home and but she said i will be praying for everybody and for successful camp mm -hmm. so that's all for the day and when i'm afraid i will trust in the lord and that is a wonderful statement we can take and there's over eight thousand promises and i'm going to go through all 8,000 of them tomorrow. No, not again. <laughs> just one, just one. So Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Father, for the body of Christ here. Thank you, Father, for the Spirit of God to be here. And thank you, Father, for using your servants, your majestic one to glorify yourself in the midst of all the darkness and darts and doubts and all the things that going on but you are still in charge god you are large and you are in charge and thank you for everything bless our day as we are preparing and especially those who are coming father to the camp and it will be a blessing and our refuge place for many drifted and un decided souls and it will be encouragement those who are belong to you to be a light and a beacon house for those who are wondering in jesus name amen we are very thankful wow. that you come and speak to the young people thank, thank you sir thank you very much can, much. Before we turn off, can i take wow. just sure. a second i won't take long i just wanted to take um, a minute I'm going to go back. I'm going to steal your slides for a second. Can I go back? Sure. There we go. So Fassel and Carrie have been involved with the camp for nine years, did we figure out now? Something. Nine years. I think you've missed one time missed in nine time. years. Yeah. And uh, was he was in Pakistan at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I wanted to take just a, just a moment is... Um, these guys get on a plane and fly over here to come be a part of this camp for the last nine years. And, and y'all are involved with camp every year, the entire congregation. Um, it's, it's a blessing for all of us to be able to, to be involved with this, whether it's through, <clears throat> whether it's through prayer or actually physically on a campsite or administration. We, we have uh, our planning or whatever the case might be. Uh, fundraising 
it, it's such a blessing um, to be a part of that and so humbling to be involved in that with all those that, that are uh, involved in making this happen. So everybody is, is incredibly special in this. But as I look back here, <clears throat> all these kids, the impact that we've had over the years, that God has had on these kids over the years has been amazing. Um, that same stuff is happening in Pakistan. And Fassel and Kerry, not only do they run all of this stuff with Grace Bible Church Pakistan and all that's going on there, but they take the time to take a week out of their crazy lives, busy, um, to come be a part of this and to teach and to spend time. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have each day uh, uh, after breakfast and after lunch, the camp cabins get together and they sit down with Fassel and we call it Fassel time. And uh, it's exciting. It, it It's very interesting because it's not predetermined what we're going to talk about. The, the campers get get there, they sit down and they start talking and they start interacting with Fassel and Carrie, when she's here, they, she spends time in small group. Um, it, it's, it's always interesting to me to hear what they're talking about. And I always get a little concerned when I hear the, all the, the things about black magic and, and <laughs> demon possession. And I'm like, great, that's what they're going to take home and tell their parents they learned at camp. Um, but so far, I haven't had any complaints with regards to that. But he's just he spends time with the kids, and it's real, and it's amazing. And, and I just picture this with Fassel and and his his family that does all of this in Pakistan. Uh, and, and so please, two requests, please just constantly be in prayer. Uh, America is an interesting, the, the mission field for us at camp is right here in America. It's our mission field with these young people in this area. And, and people are coming from different areas. The young people are coming from different areas and the, the, the staff are coming from all over the place to be involved with this. That's our mission field. This is his mission field and his home. And seeing what we have going on at camp and then seeing what Fassel and, and Carrie and, and their family have going on in Pakistan is, is just incredible. And to hear the, the mega church, you know, I don't think it's about being in a mega church, but it's pretty cool when God says, here you go. Yeah, um, and so, Two requests. Please continue to be in prayer for uh, Grace Bible Church, Pakistan. And just picture those kids, that face in your mind as you as you sit down and spend time in prayer for this, this group of people. And there's nothing that can be more important than that, than spending time in prayer for them and for, for the word. Um, but also, gracebiblechurchpakistan.org, we financially support uh, Carrie and Fassel and and all that's going on in Grace Bible Church, Pakistan, it's not about them. They are the ones that get to come and tell us about it. <clears throat> but if you if you find yourself in a position of, of wanting to financially support, please go here. This is the best place to go, and there's a way to donate and 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 support them. Right? I think about the fact that um, we we go and and get Starbucks, and we'll pay 15 bucks for for Starbucks for a couple of us to drink a, a latte here and a latte there, right? In Australia, they drink it like six times a day, right? And it's $15 yeah. per cup. Um, he was telling us this story. <clears throat> what would, how many Bibles would $15 of Starbucks pay for for early, early Bibles? Yeah, probably three. Yeah, so even four. when you throw back, when, when we throw back our Starbucks or we throw back our, um, you know, whatever we, we choose, the, the, the thing we don't even think about that just comes off the top. There's there's three Bibles that could be produced for, in Urdu to uh, to give to these families in uh, in Pakistan. So that's that's my prayer request to y'all is is please be in prayer for this fa this family, our family. Remember y'all, this is our family. Yeah. This is the church, and so uh, be in prayer for them, constant prayer for them, and please uh, financially support them if you can. We do that through our, our uh, ministry, uh, the youth ministry, but uh, anywhere where we can uh, support even more, uh, that would be awesome. So thank you for your time this morning.